Right, come on in, come on in, Tyler. We are going to be talking today about CANBUS. CANBUS stands for cool and nerdy, which is what we are going to be today. So it is a car communication bus. Right, why do we want this? Right, so we have been playing with this Android head unit. And what it, it all works, but when it goes to the original screen, when you touch the Android screen with it displaying the original screen, it is not changing us so we can't select four by four information so let me give you a little demo here um if i want to i want to go back so we are on the original screen here it doesn't come up it's a really nice display isn't it tyler um so if we press and hold it goes back so if we go on to the home so this is the android and it's a touch screen and we can swipe and do everything but when we go to view the original screen it takes us to view the original screen now we can control the original screen using the various functions here so we can skip and and change from we could go mode here and you can see i can select dab hold on oh i can select let me select cd player there select that and so I can do all that, but I can't touch the screen here. Now, that's really limiting because there's, there's something you just cannot do. But what would be really cool is if I touch the screen here, the Android head unit screen knows I'm touching it where it says radio. We can program it. So if I touch it in that, then take me to radio or take me to phone. So for example, if we select the home menu, if I press this phone here, we knew that if it did the same as pressing this button here, it clearly takes me to phone. So, and then and then if I press this one, it would take me back. So, what will be really good is how, well, how do people who design this make that work? How do they make this work? Well, they listen in to the CAN bus. So, all these signals here, well, let's turn that off for a minute, Tyler. Um, so, all the signals are on the CAN bus. So, let me explain a bit more about CAN bus. So, CAN bus is a communication bus. Now, on this Discovery 4, there's high-speed CAN bus and that's got ABS and steering angle and all the airbags and all the super critical stuff but it has a sort of B-Tech lower rate CAN bus that's called the medium speed CAN bus and that has got stuff like heating and if the doors are open and audio and probably the clock and all these things are on the medium speed CAN bus. Now the CAN bus is like having a stadium full or a classroom full of people all shouting and they're all shouting different things one guy there he's shouting your engine revs are this mate your engine revs are that it's 3000 it's 3200 it's 3400 another guy's going change from radio to cd i want the cd on i want the cd on another guy's going switch navigation so when you press the nav button here then he's the guy that's going right it's my job and he shouts navigation on please navigation on please so the problem is that there's loads of people all shouting at the same time on this canva so what we're going to try and do today is with some very cheap equipment we are going to look at the canvas and we are going to see if we can work out the very basic function so this is an educational video to show you and explain to people who are interested in canvas how it works right before we get into the laptop and the cool and nerdy stuff we are going to have a look at this here so right so this we know that this module here da -da -da, is got CAN bus functionality on it. It turns the NAT, it turns the, the infotainment system on and off. You can change the mode. You saw me doing that. You can change the volume. So this, the connector on this is going to be the key. So this is where I started. Now, bear in mind, until a week ago, I hadn't done any of this. So I am as new to this as half of you. And there'll be people that know loads more than me. Right. So what I did was I looked at this connector. Now, this connector, you can see I've been busy, but basically it's only got four connectors, four wires, sorry, going to it. It's got this black wire here. It's got this green wire here. And it's got these two yellow stripy wires in the middle. You got that, Tyler? Yeah. yeah. So what I have done is I have tapped into these four wires and I have linked it in to this little device. Now, this little device here is a Machina M2. Now you can buy these, they're out of stock at the moment, um, but you can buy these. So I bought one, I can't remember what it cost me, I'm going to say like £80. And what this device is, it's one of these Arduino, which are like these little baby computers, you've got Raspberry Pi, this is Arduino. And it's an Arduino little mini computer thing, and on top of it, or joined to it, it's got a CAN bus decoder. So it can listen to CAN bus, send it into the computer, and then basically in in overly simplified terms 
This is a CAN bus to USB converter. So my computer can now listen directly to the CAN bus. Now, if you want more information, I will tell you how to set up one of these devices, but that will be a separate video. So basically, there's a 26 pin connector here and I've got CAN high and CAN low. Now you can normally recognize CAN wires on a car because they're normally twisted round each other. Um, and that's to do with reducing noise. And you can also tell CAN bus on a car, I'll demonstrate this quickly. If you suspect it's CAN bus, CAN bus signals are really cool. So we are gonna go on to a voltmeter. Whoa, can you put that where you can see it, Tyler? Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jab up into the backside of these two wires here. And one of them, oops, I got my light. In fact, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one of them on earth. I'm gonna put that one there on the metal casing of my stereo unit there right and then this one i'm going to put in to the back of one of these and we'll see if it's can high or can low right have you got a voltage there tightly yes so you've got 2.9 and if i go to the one that is can high and if i go to the one to the left of it we have got a voltage 2.3 2.4 right now it will change now the way can bus works is really interesting because normally when you have a signal you have a ground like a zero and then you have a digital signal it goes up to five volts and down to zero volts and that's a one and when it's at zero that's a zero when it goes back up to five it might stay there for a bit longer that's a one and another one and and that's it but what if you get a spike on that signal and you were at a zero if you get some noise from the car somewhere it goes oh hold on you've gone to one when, when it might not have gone to one. But what they do on CAN bus is rather than having zero and five volts as zero and one, they, they do everything about 2.5 in the middle. And when they want to do a one signal, the one, the CAN low goes down and the CAN high goes up and you create this big difference. And then when you want a zero signal, they both go to 2.5 again. And what it actually looks at is the difference. So you can see that when one goes down and one goes up, you'll get a five volt difference and when they go together you get no volts difference and that's a zero and if you get a spike it will affect both of them equally so the difference will remain the same right can bus so we have got can high and can low we've wired those can high and can low into here and the other two connections are zero and 12 volts so we are now listening in to the can bus on our car so right what we next need to do is we need to start up the computer let's see if it's going to wake up for me and we need to load a program called Savvy Can. Right, so there we go. And I've already loaded it. And this is written by a cool guy who's way cooler. And for free, he has written this program called Savvy Can 199. You can Google it and find it. And his name is Live Kidder. Colin Kidder. Colin Kidder. Big shout out to Colin Kidder. Please, lots of love in the comments for Colin because he has written this program for free. And he is a super cool guy. And um, he has given me some support in getting this going in his own time for free. So lots of love for him. Right, now what we can do is we first need to set up a connection. So I'll just do this quickly. All right, and you just go to the connection, open a connection window. We add a new device and we've only got one port to choose from. And this should, uh, it says not connected. It's got three buses. So watch this will change to connected. You got a good view of the screen, Tyler? Is that working? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There we go, it's got connected and we've got three buses. Now, the high speed and medium speed CAN bus, the medium speed CAN bus on the Land Rover runs at 125 kilobits per kilohertz. Um, and that's how quick it talks. And we've got to make sure the computer is at the same listening speed as the signal being processed. The high speed CAN bus is at 500K. So one thing we have to do here is if I just select this one, or oh, I'm not very good on touch pads. If I just select this one here, we can set it. And you can see I've set this to the board rate of 125,000 here. Right, so we're all connected, we're all ready to go. So if we close the connection window or minimize the connection window, whoa, you can see all this information. What, what we've got here, we've got a timestamp. So this is the time that the message was broadcast. This is the ID. Now the ID is the name of the person in the classroom in the stadium that's shouting. So we can this could be Bob or Harry or Henry or Charlie, and they're all got their own job. They all shout signals. But obviously, rather than giving them names in computer land, we give all these signals an ID. And this is in hexadecimal, this identification number. So you see this is 4CF and 4CD, right? 
Now, this is which bus it's come in on, and this is the length of the message. So this is how many words they're going to shout at us, and this is the message they are actually shouting here. And you can see it's got eight portions to it, and any one of those could change, right? And this is the list down here of all the people it's found. It's analysed what it can hear, and it said, I found all these guys are in the room. So we've got all these guys in the room. You can see there's quite a lot of them, and they're all continually shouting some nonsense. So if I clear it, okay, and restart capturing, you'll see, bam, instantly it all comes in. Now, how can we, from all this nonsense, work out what opening the door signal is, or what skip CD or anything is? That is the art to this. Now, we can make it a little bit, a little bit easier by we can do overwrite. Okay, so we're going to run it in overwrite mode. Now, rather than it being a whole continual pages, now we've just got one. And you'll see that the timestamp is changing, but this guy's message, he's shouting a lot. And we can see what he's always, can you see that end bit is just flashing and changing. Hopefully this will come out. I'm sorry, I should be able to do screen capture and stuff. But we can do some more screen capture stuff later if you want more details on this. Right. But there's actually an even cooler mode we can go to in this. Now, I'm not an expert on this, but if you go into these tools here, we can go on the sniffer mode, right? Now, basically, this has got all the people, all the people in the room, their, their, their ID is listed here, and this is what they're shouting. Now, only if what they're shouting changes is it highlighting, and it's red or green, I guess, if it's going up or down. Now, we can actually simplify this a lot more there's a fade so people who aren't saying anything we can actually we can fade them out and if i click that fade whoop, you'll see then that instantly all the numbers go now this is a lot clearer now from this basis we can actually start to do things so we know if we open and close the door if it's on here we should see something come and go so let me open the door oh, right and and what we're looking for is a number that's changing, but then fades away. Now, again, I'm not sure how this is coming out, but if you look just here, I'll keep my finger there. You see, there's nothing there. But when I open the door, look, it comes. And what letter have we got in there? 5C. 5C. All right. 5E. 5C. 5E. So we know when the passenger door opens, it changes from 5C to the... Now, if I just open that again... And if I put a ruler across, it's not very scientific, this. I can see that this is ID 88. So this is Freddy. Freddy's number's 88. He's the ID of the person that's shouting. So we can actually make this a little easier. So we can, we can go, right, we're only interested in 88. Now, these are all the people in the room. Now, what we can do is we can make them all shut up. And we can only get, we only want to listen to the guy it's called Freddy at 88. So we can now see Freddy. Now, this is the live reading of Freddy. Now, we can see it's 5C. We can do that. It's 5E. Now, if we get Tyler to open his door there, let's have a look. We can see, hopefully you can see. Let me put my finger there. It's, it's 5E. Close your door, Tyler. And it changes to 5F. So there you go, 5E. And if we have two doors open, it changes from 5F to 5D to 5C. So you can see that you can listen into the CAN bus and make things happen that do so. This is CAN bus decoding. Now, what could we use this for? Now, a lot of people have got the new Defender and they've said to me, Simon, I'd like to add some tricky lights on my roof so I can see kangaroos far off. Apparently they have kangaroos in some countries. And um, Scotland, yes. Players Scotland and Wales apparently have kangaroos, yeah. And apparently you need big lights to see them. In the, hey, we've got a sheep over there, look. See, we, so maybe we know how to put some big lights on our roof to have a look at our sheep. Now, the old way you would do it is you'd go up to your main beam wire and you'd get one of those scotch blocks and you'd twist it all up or do something. And then you'd drive a relay if you were a professional. And, and when your main beam went on, the relay would activate and bam, clear illumination. But it's getting harder and harder to do that on modern cars, as many things are activated not by just 12 volts, 0 volts. They're activated by signals. So if we could design a box, and this is what we are going to try and do, but bear with us, uh, a box that listened into just the canvas, so we just need two wires listening in, 
it would know, for example, when we open the doors, we could turn an interior light on or we could activate something. And when we turn main beam on, we could then maybe activate um, some lights. And you could even do it, you could say, if it was below a certain speed or above a certain speed, then activate the lights. And if main beam, so you could have a, an argument in there that says, if we switch the main beam, if the car main beam is on and we're going faster than 10 miles an hour, then put the big lights on on the roof. So that's kind of what we would like to do. And I think this will be the future of car wiring accessories and stuff. So there we go, little cool and nerdy video today on canvas hope you enjoyed it let us know if you want to know more of this sort of educationally stuff there you go good luck